Hello from New Zealand. It's Molly Matthews here. I thought I'd just do a little live, see if anyone's there and um, do, do a wave to you. And um, I would love to share a little bit from my book, Flight of Passion with you. So here's a little bit about the blurb. There's nothing more dangerous than a captivated heart. So Oliver Hart is used to getting what he wants. He's single, 35, and a committed bachelor, and he plays by his own rules. On a personal quest to catch a rare, elusive, and very valuable butterfly to save his sister's life, he's unwillingly distracted by former flame Ruby Diaz, a woman who callously abandoned him eight years earlier. Hello, Hannah Joy, over there in Australia. <laughs> And uh, he decides he wants to reclaim the beauty as his own. And here is the cover. I just love this co cover. And in his mind, it's as good as done. But Ruby's not his for the taking. Promised to the son of a wealthy landowner, she refuses to succumb to his charms. And really, it's all around um, the, the tension between the two of them, the, the past conflicts. I mean, this is what, why I love writing love stories because it's all this sort of past hurts that keep people who are destined to be together from being together. And I'm just going to, um, I'll just show you a little bit, just flick through this page. I just love some of the little chapter headings. And uh, let's see, there's a lovely, here's a lovely quote. Each chapter has a different quote. And it's loss. It's so much darker when a light goes out than when it, then it would have been had it never shone, John Steinbeck. So that's really all around, you know, when when bright lights are snuffled out, whether it's through fear, jealousy, or whether loss of life, um, loss is such an important thing for many people in their relationships, the loss of a love. I think that uh, it can be inspiring too, like Miley Cyrus is, is singing at the moment about flowers, and she can, you know, she can love herself, which is so important. But here's a little, I'll just read a little page from my book. It's just a little live today just to say hi and let you know I'm working on a book called Stolen by the Sheik, which I'm super inspired about. Um, inspired again by bringing the characters together from Claim by the Sheik, which is one of my most popular romances. Bringing in the younger brother and a beautiful uh, art curator who um, basically is stolen by the Sheik for reasons you will discover. So here's chapter 24. Why do I feel so uneasy? A sinking feeling pushed down on Ruby's stomach in a wave of nausea. She stood up and walked to the window. She brushed the silk curtain aside gently and watched from above as the guests began to arrive. The party had been called in her honour. Carlos had told her it was a belated welcome home. But he'd also once told her that he would never come back to this hellhole. None of it made any sense. And none of it quelled the shiver of unease that scuttled up her spine. She didn't like crowds and she hated being the centre of attention even more. Knots churned in her stomach as she gazed down at the guests carrying gifts wrapped with large bows and fine papers that glistened with threads of gold and silver. It isn't my birthday, she thought anxiously, nibbling on her ringless fingers. She bit her lip pensively as she returned to her dresser. And she brushed her glossy curls, sliding the gorgeous diamond-encrusted butterfly clip in her hair. Dotted with sapphires and amethysts and edged in gold, it had been couriered to her earlier in the day, accompanied only by an elegantly simple white card embossed with the words, always in my heart. So just for those that are just watching live, this is an excerpt from Flight of Passion. She's just got this mysterious gift, the heroine, uh, and it's a beautiful butterfly clip. May I come in? Carlos pushed open the door and strode across the room, startling her from her thoughts. Of course, you needn't ask, Ruby said, getting up from her dressing table. Her eyes flew to the towering boxes he carried purposely in his arms, which he placed decisively upon the bed. Thank you for the exquisite gift, she said, gesturing to the clip perched amongst her curls. It's perfect. A shadowed frown cast a grim dark line over his face. 
open them, he said, ignoring her reference to the gift and pointing to the elegantly wrapped boxes littering the bed. His gaze, she noted with discomfort as he watched her walk towards the boxes majestically emblazoned with the French Couture House Dior, Dior's logo, was analytical, appraising and calculating. It was as though in studying her curves, the gracefulness of her walk, the lean, perfectly proportioned lines of her body, he was admiring her like a stud owner admires a filly he's preparing for show. It's a little something I picked up on our recent trip to Paris, he said, as she began to untie the large red satin bows. Ruby smiled weakly. You spoil me. You shouldn't have. She walked across to the bed, her stomach churning with a nervous energy which she found unsettling. I want you to look beautiful. Ruby stiffened. Don't you like what I'm wearing? Carlos shrugged as he studied the clean classical lines of her dress. You're a beautiful woman, but your preference for understated elegance does not show you off to perfection. You should shine more, my darling, and then everyone would see what a truly lucky man I am. Ruby smiled tightly. He didn't mean to be unkind, but she couldn't help feeling like a show pony about to be paraded for other people's pleasure. She lifted the lid of the deal box, unfolded the tissue and took out the dress Carlos had purchased for her. It's, it's lovely, she said, trying to hide the overwhelming feeling that flooded her body. Put it on, he commanded, leaning against the wall, one arm folded over the other, his hand resting firmly under his chin. She walked toward him. Can you unzip me, she said, turning her back to him. There's two more pages I'm going to read from Flight of the Passion. Flight of Passion. Uh, Carlos traced the back of her neck with his fingers and unzipped her dress slowly, pausing briefly at the curve of her buttocks. Ruby stepped forward quickly and allowed the elegantly simple, clean-lined Lundvin dress she had planned wearing to slip unceremoniously to the tiled floor. She gazed at the mound of crumpled silk wistfully. She walked to the bed and put on the dress Carlos had chosen. She concentrated on maintaining an air of excitement and smiled tightly, her mouth aching with the strain. Overwhelming flurries of silk and lace glittering with tiny rhinestones and lustrous with the glow of seed pearls swirled around her. She felt surrounded, smothered, imprisoned. You look beautiful, he said, like a princess. Ruby shifted on her feet. I feel like an overdressed meringue. Now, come on, everyone will be wondering where we have got to. Carlos, you still haven't told me what's going on. Are you celebrating something? Did you get the party nomination? Not yet, but I am celebrating. We are, he corrected himself. I've invited all our closest friends, even managed to bring in one or two surprises. His lips curved and a half smile. I hope you'll be pleased. A wave of apprehension washed over her. She raised her hand and rubbed her temple and swept her fingers over her head, unsettling the butterfly clip in her hair. Are you okay, my darling? You look pale. It's nothing, just a slight headache, that's all. Nothing a good party won't cure, I hope, he said impatiently. Finish getting dressed and come and join your friends. Her lips curved into a smile that didn't reach her eyes. My friends, Ruby gazed out the window again. She could see a friendly face amongst them. Acquaintances, yes. Contacts of Carlos, yes. Family, yes. But a true friend? No. The crowd of celebrities, media moguls, entertainers and politicians looked more like a meeting of who's who than people gathered to wish Ruby a heartfelt welcome home. <sighs> so that's the end of my little excerpt from chapter 24. So I wonder, could this be the man that sent Ruby the butterfly clip? Where is he in the story? Mm, and what has Carlos got planned for the beautiful Ruby? What is the secret that's going to be revealed in front of all the friends and people gathered? And why is she dressed up in a big, puffy, white 
buffet dress. You'll have to read the story to um, find out more. So yeah, this is Flight of Passion. And at the end it says, risking everything to help the woman he loves gain her freedom, Oliver Hart entangles himself in an emotional net that alters his life forever. And as he sacrifices his own selfless pursuit to help Ruby, he realizes that you may be able to own something, but you can never own someone, especially the woman you love. So thanks for watching. I'd love your comments. I'd love to know what you liked about the story. I'd love to know if you'd like me to do more of these lives. This has been Molly Matthews coming from New Zealand in the beautiful Bay of Islands where there literally are butterflies outside in the garden. Take care, my friends. Thanks for watching. Bye.